Hi everyone. This is Mr. Panny. I am the librarian at Lawrence Road and I am someone you'll probably get familiar with over the next three years if you're not familiar with me already because in addition to doing the usual library stuff that has to do with books and research, I'm also the technology specialist in our building. So um, I wanted to kind of talk you through the process for setting up a district um, iPad. Uh, this year, we are very, very lucky. All of our students in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade will now have iPads. Our 7th graders um, kept theirs from last year. And for 6th and 8th graders, um, the process of setting it up is new. So I have step-by-step uh, -step instructions here. I'm going to talk you through it. And of course, if you have any questions, you can contact your child's guidance counselor or myself or any of their teachers once school gets going. So if you have received an iPad from the district, first step is to go into settings. Please be aware if you um, are already familiar with iPads and iPhones, the process um, of setting it up with an Apple ID is going to be quite similar, but you are not able to configure your district iPad with a personal Apple ID. So we have district provided Apple IDs, and that's why these instructions are necessary. So please, you know, take your time, go through it slowly so that you um, are sure that you're not making a mistake. So once you're in settings, there will be a space near the top, I think it's off to the left hand side, where it says sign in to your iPad. You're going to click that. And there's a space for Apple ID. This is going to be given to you by the school. When you pick up your device, they will have some sort of instructions, either in the form of a packet or a card or a label or something. If you do not have an Apple ID for your district iPad, please don't set it up until you receive that from the school. Uh, they are working you know, really, really hard to try and make sure that all of this um, is prepared for the day that you pick up your iPad. But just in case it is not quite ready yet, please understand that it will be ready very, very soon. And as soon as we share it with you, then you can go through these steps on your own. The Apple ID is long. It's crazy. We begged them to change it, but they didn't. So it's going to follow this format right here, first name, last name. If you have two last names, I believe they're both there. So we could have many, many, many characters in this very long Apple ID, uh, looks like an email address. Your job is to copy it exactly as it appears on that label or a uh, document that you were given. Common mistakes. We did this last year with um, the sixth graders when they were in the library with me in person and common mistakes. By accident, misspelling Uniondale. We often saw, you know, a couple of letters reversed or something like that. Often forgetting the S at the end of Uniondale schools. People, you know, just in typing quickly left off that S. Sometimes just out of habit, we type .com because that's so common, uh, please understand that this um, email address always ends with .org. Uh, and remember, there are no spaces. So exactly as it appears on the document that you were given is exactly how you will type it. Uh, after you type that, it's going to ask you for your temporary password. Apple um, is really, really a huge proponent of security. So we were not able to, um, you know, pre-assign passwords. They give a temporary password that you must enter first, and then you can configure it with a permanent password. Uh, this temporary password is also on the label or document that you were given from your school. I believe it's eight digits and it's gonna look funky. It's going to have, um, you know, some capital letters and some lowercase letters and maybe some numbers thrown in there too. Just like the very long Apple ID email address, you have to type this funky password exactly as it appears on the document that you were given. When you are prompted, I believe you type in the temporary password first, and then you'll get to another screen that looks like this. And it, when it says current, 
it's asking for that temporary one again, that one with all the funky digits and capital letters. You have to type that one more time, and then you're going to type the new password twice. First where it says new, and then again where it says verify. This is the format that all students must use when creating this password. The reason for this is so that if there is ever a problem with the device, the tech department or an administrator or a teacher would be able to share the not only the Apple ID, which we have a record of, but the new password. It's no longer going to be listed as a temporary password. The new one, we would be able to look this up for you. So everyone's format must be the same. Here's what it looks like. You're going to take your password that you use when you sign on to Google, right? We're all getting ready to sign into Google Classroom. Every time you sign into Google, you're going to use the same password. For most of us, the format is the um, computer password that you were given probably, you know, whenever you first started using computers here in Uniondale School District. It's usually your initials backwards, followed by the last four digits of your student ID number. And then because it's Google, we had to put a couple of extra letters at the end. And we said, let's just put your initials, right? So the way your Google password looks is, uh, for example, my name is Paula Trapani. So my regular initials are PT. In the beginning of my password though, it's listed as TP, my initials backwards. If my student ID was 001234, the middle part of my password is going to be this section right here, the last four digits of my student ID. So, so far I have TP1234, and then I just have to remember to put my initials in the right order at the end, PT. The only difference in your Google password, it looks just like this, except capital letters are unnecessary. So you do not have to put a capital letter. In Apple, they needed a capital letter. So we said it's going to be the same password with one teeny tiny difference. The first digit is a capital letter. So once again, you're going to put your Google password where it asks you for new and verify. And you simply have to remember to make sure that the first digit is a capital letter. If you do all of that correctly, please take your time. If you, you know, it, it's a process, right? We don't want you to make any mistakes. If you are, enter something incorrectly, uh, you're not gonna get to this screen that welcomes you uh, as a user to your new device. It's going to say, oops, you made a mistake, go back and start all over again. And that's really annoying because really the main reason is because this thing is so long and you have to type it again. But if you do it all correctly, you'll be welcomed. You'll see your initials on here and your full name and this very long, crazy Apple ID. That will be your proof that you have entered your Apple ID correctly. Once you are in, you may not log out. It, the devices are unable to be logged in with personal Apple IDs. And that brings me to my next reminder. Now that you're logged in as a Uniondale District user, the only apps that are available to us can be found in this app known as Self Service. It looks just like this, multicolored, kind of a square shape off to the, uh, on its side. Um, the only apps that we can install are ones that the district has approved or and or paid for or you know given us access to. Um, we are not to go to the regular app store. It won't work. You can't just download any app that you want. You have to um, only use, you know, the school related applications uh, that the district has approved. This is not your personal device. This is a district owned device. So just like our computers, the desktop computers in our classrooms and libraries are limited with what we can install on them and what we can do. Same is true for the iPads. So that means you can forget about, you know, downloading all your favorite social media sites and, you know, all those fun things. We can only download what the district has said. Sure, you can download those. A couple other things to remember about these iPads. This is new for our district. Um, it is your responsibility to keep it safe, keep it clean. Uh, don't, you know, have food or drink near it. No stickers. Please don't write on the cases. Uh, please make sure it's fully charged each day. You will be asked to use it um, in all of your classes, especially now while we're doing virtual learning. Um, all the rules that apply in school as far as uh, you know, behavior when it comes to technology, 
they apply even though you're home. Again, it's a district device. So only appropriate images and, you know, text and content and apps and all of that um, can be used on these devices. There will be random iPad checks. Uh, they can even be done remotely. So um, it's really important that you, you know, follow the rules of the acceptable use policy because it's possible that you could be spotted uh, doing something or installing something that shouldn't be there, in which case your iPad will get locked and you will no longer have access. If while you're working on your iPad, something, you know, isn't working properly or you, you know, forgot how to do something or you're not sure, you know, how to access something, please reach out to any of your teachers and you can always contact me, Mr. Penny, with questions. I hope this was helpful and uh, I wish you the best of luck in the 2020-2021 school year. If you found this tech tip useful, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on TikTok.